In the last part of the expression series, we will basically modify the group node to group our points and other elements based on the bounding box of a given object. Well, this is not the fancy part of it, because you can simply select and group items based on the bounding option, and you can even define the object that is used as the bounding. But where is the point, you might ask? Well, using the bound by objects limits the group to selecting points only. In addition, using the default box is somewhat annoying because of putting in the dimension and position manually. Luckily, you can modify these channels to update the size and position of a given bounding box using expressions. So let's dive in. As always, we need some nodes to work with, so two boxes in a merge and a group node are perfect to illustrate the workflow. As we have learned in previous parts, expressions will allow us to make attributes from all over the project accessible and easy to use in our node. If you haven't already done it, I highly recommend watching the previous parts where I am explaining expressions in detail. You can use expressions right away. The only requirement for that is a channel that suits our attribute type or the value we want to access. They are the equivalent to vex if you want to work similarly, making use of functions like the bounding box or the centroid function, which are the exact same functions we need to make our group node as flexible as we want. So let's assume you want to group the bottom part of your object and don't want to rely on position or dimension. These are the parameters we will change. To not change them manually all the time, we want to make use of the bound of a given geometry and reposition it as we want. Therefore, let's type in the expression that will first define the position of our box. Since we want to group the bottom points of my object, I try to place the box in the center of our object using the centroid function by only defining the path and name of our reference object and type D for dimension, underscore X for the axis. I will just copy and paste the same expression in the other channels as well, just updating the axis in the end. However, for the Y axis I won't use the centroid of the object because that will position my box in the center of the object and I want it to be at the bottom. So I will type in the bbox function for calculating the bounding box, adding location and name, and putting the d for dimension, underscore, the axis, and the min in capitals, because it's the bottom. The counterpart is the max, which would take the maximum value, and that would be at the top. Obviously not the max of the x-axis like I did here. Perfect. Now that we have defined the location, we need the size as well. Here it is not enough to put the min or max indicators for the dimension. We need to subtract the one from the other to get an actual complete size value. Just keep in mind, max minus min is always the win. That being said, just type in the B box for max subtracting the B box for min. It's of course B box and not books, which will resize your bounding box exactly to fit in your object, since our bounding reference happens to be also our object where we want to group on. However, it can be more robust to add a tiny number because sometimes it won't fit every point because it's right at the edge, and sometimes Houdini won't take that point in the group, depending on your reference object. I use point zero 0.01 which is a fairly small number, and won't affect any other point in my example besides the bottom ones. For the z-axis I use the exact same expression, but I am changing the axis at the end. For the y-axis we are flexible since we want to group only the bottom points. Here you have multiple options at hand. Either you put a static number in here that won't change throughout the project, or you can use the same expression with little modification and multiply it by a number smaller or greater than 1, which essentially means that you can group in percentages if you want. You might think, what does that mean? Well, having the max subtracting the min bounding, you get the full range of your object represented as a box, obviously. Multiply that by 1, or not multiply at all would be the 100%. Multiply it by 0.1 would be the tenth of it and so on. However, putting our box at the bottom will mean that we have to double the multiplier in order to work in the correct percentage because the other half of our box is beneath our object. Don't worry, the confusion is complete at this point. From here on it's getting easier. The observant listener probably has already encountered the biggest problem with this workflow. It is a huge load of writing to just set up the procedural bounding for grouping. Luckily, I've already made a tool that will help you to easily change the position and size of your reference bounding box. Just take a look on point index. Tools, here you'll find it. I will put a link in the description. With this tool, you can easily determine the center of your object or its minimum or maximum bounds. It's a simple tool, but if you like to group that way, it will probably save you a ton of time. That's all for today. 
That was the last part of expressions and we will move on. Next Friday I'll show you how I built the sci-fi panel tool. See you next time.